Now at some point or another, uh, you've probably written down the uh, Taylor polynomial for e of the x up to some term. So we're just going to write down some of e of the x and then we'll try to come up with the uh, series representation for all of e of the x. So e of the x, the Taylor polynomial really just started with 1 and then it was plus x and then it's x squared over 2 and then if you ever went to the third it would have been x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial etc 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 so what this ends up being if we were to actually come up with the series representation for e the x centered at well, this one centered at 0 we would just get x to the n over n factorial so if we really had a series x to the n over n factorial where n goes from 0 to infinity we would have this equaling e to the x this no longer becomes an approximation when you take an infinite number of terms it actually becomes a series and e to the x becomes so widely used and so does sine and cosine that we kind of want to have them memorized so e to the x is the basic one and you get sine and cosine basically from e to the x I remember doing the Taylor series for sine and cosine one was the evens one was kind of the odds so let's see here if I have sine of x we need this to work at zero so let's see should it be the evens or the odds now the evens includes a zero power one think about this sine of zero not theta <laughs> zero equals zero so I want to start that with one actually cosine of zero is one so cosine is a little easier actually than sine is which is generally strange in math terms so cosine of x starts with one well they all they skip so the next one's going to be actually they skipped and they also alternate sine as I squared over two plus x to the fourth over four factorial plus minus again sorry geez minus x to the six over six factorial so cosine of zero is one and then all the rest of these end up dropping out so cosine of zero is one sine of zero should be zero so the very first term is just x and then it would be minus the x cubed over three factorial well that's kind of weird over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial plus da 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 plus da 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 so if you don't believe me go ahead and take the Taylor polynomial uh, fifth degree if you'd like to of uh, sine of x or cosine of x if you want to see me do one of those um, if you go back to Taylor polynomials I think I do sine up to five terms at one point but that's basically what they are. So what we need is the series representation for this. And we end up getting that series to be, well, the odds are actually a little harder than the evens. So let's write the evens first. So for cosine, we get x basically to the 2n. So any n you get, raise it to that, over 2n factorial. So if n is 1, then we get 1 factorial. If n is 2, we get 2 factorial. And is sorry if n is two you get four factorial if n is three you get six factorial etc 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 and then goes from well if I want this to happen I need to go from zero and then to infinity and this is my cosine of x and then the series for sine of x well it just would be the odds oh we're missing one thing here <laughs> big thing these have to alternate which I was starting to forget at one point so to make them alternate you just need the negative one to the n up top cool stuff so same thing here we need a negative one to the n that allows it to alternate now we gotta do the adds now generally it's a 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1 will give us adds well here's the thing we gotta be careful about if we're going from if we're not gonna start this at 0 if we start it at 0 I don't really want it to be x to the negative 1 so if I plug in 0 here, I have to have 1. In other words, it puts x in the bottom, which is a little bit awkward. 
And then the same thing in the bottom, 2n plus 1, those are my odds, especially if I'm starting at 0. Start n goes from 0 to infinity. So actually there's multiple ways I could do this. I could start n at 1, and then it would be 2n minus 1, because then I would have 2 minus 1 is 1, and it would work out. So it's not exactly one right answer between the two. But those are our representations for them. Now, why is this helpful well first off it's an exact representation for sine and cosine without us needing any trig however most people are going to think that sine of x here looks a lot more simple than this series however one of the things that we can do with this is if we want to find the power series for sine of x sine of square root of x I mean if we wanted to go back and do a Taylor series of this in the written like originally, we would need all sorts of stuff. We would need f of 0, we would need f of f prime of 0, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not even really talking about where this is centered. Um, but what we can do is we can say, well, sine of x, well, and one other thing is, if you were to do the interval convergence on these problems, they would converge for all real numbers. So it doesn't even really matter what you pick for x. And this is going to converge to e to the x no matter what. It's one of the cool things for e to the x, sine of x, and cosine of x. Some of the other ones that the book call considers we, that we should just know, they have really very specific intervals of convergence. Well, anyway, if we want to find sine of square root of x, well, I know what sine of x is. The series itself, I can really just plug in square root of x. Everywhere you see x, which is only one spot. So the power series representation is negative 1 to the square root of x to the 2n plus 1. Sloppy. And plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. Now that's the exact one. However, most of the times they really say uh, find sine of square root of x um, for the first three terms, first three non-zero terms. And so that would be looking more along the lines of the series here, where every x is replaced by square root of x, minus square root of x to the third over 3 factorial, plus square root of x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And I want the first four non-zero terms, and it would just be minus square root of x to the seventh over 7 factorial. So the nice thing about this is we can seriously just plug in our next values. So let's say we want to find the power series for x times cosine of x. Uh, they do something like this a lot on the AP exam where they ask you for the first three non-zero terms and the general term. Now, if I wanted to do this very directly by going back to like the Taylor polynomial notes and saying, okay, well, what is f of 0? And first off, I don't even really know if I'm talking about a Taylor Maclaurin series. It's just as a power series. I also need to find f prime of whatever our central value is, I'm assuming 0, f double prime of 0, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until I came up with a pattern. Now, something that should jump out to us pretty quickly is who is this product here? I really don't want to be taking multiple, multiple derivatives of it if I could avoid that. But the good news is cosine of x is just, you know, cosine of 0 is 1, and this is the x to the 0 term, minus alternates, x squared over 2 factorial, cosine is just the evens, right? Plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, etc, etc, etc. Plus dot 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 dot. Now, if I want to just multiply that by x, why can't I just multiply it by x? And it becomes x minus x cubed over 2 factorial plus x to the fifth over, not 5 factorial, but 4 factorial. And I'm just multiplying by an x. Now, if I was told to do the first three non zero terms, there's one, there's two, there's three. And then the general term, which Maybe you want to start with a minus dot 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 dot. And maybe even a plus at the end. And i got to look up this terminology. I don't know if this particular part right here makes much of a difference. 
The next term definitely should be a minus if I have plus here. But this nth term is kind of depends on when it ends. So the general term is the negative 1 to the n. And then we've got to do our x's. But now, if I'm starting this at 0, I really have to go from n plus 1 over. And then these are the evens. Oh, see? 2n plus 1, sorry, because in other words, it would not really go anywhere. And then the bottom is just even, it's 2n. Now, even if I wanted to think of this tracking a little bit different, these two now match up, where this is going to be one more as an exponent than the bottom is going to be as well. So I've got my first three non-zero terms and the general term. Perfect. All right, now number eight is very similar. I want the to find the power series for e to the x times sine of x. And it really kind of depends if I want the first three non-zero terms. The general term might be a little bit more tough for this particular problem. So let's see. Let's think about what we have. e to the x is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial, etc., etc., etc. All of this times... Well, sine of x is, doesn't start with 1, it starts with the x, and that'd be minus the x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial, and then it keeps moving. Okay, so let's think about this. If we were to FOIL all this out, which is kind of an odd thing we would talk about doing, let's just think about what we would get, thinking left to right. Well, if I take 1 times x, I'm going to get an x. Are there going to be any more x terms? Mm, not so much. Now let's think about this. 1 times x cubed, that gives me x cubed. Now let's think about x squared terms. Well, I am going to get an x squared here. But I end up getting it a couple different ways. I'll end up with an x times the x here. That'll be an x squared, so plus x squared, but if I wanted to line up this next term here, it's not really going to be another x squared. I'm not going to get any more x squareds out of this. Okay, so do we have any x cubes? Okay, well, 1 times x cubed would be a negative x cubed over 3 factorial. Are there any more x cubes? Well, the 1 is not going to give me any more x cubes. The x times anything is not going to give me any x cubes, but then I get this x squared times x. That's going to give me another plus x cubed over, well, let's see here, I got just a 2 factorial. Alright, any other way for me to possibly get x cubes? I really don't see it. So 3 factorial is 6 and 2 factorial is 2. So if I want just my first three non-zero terms, it's going to be x plus x squared, and then I've got minus x cubed over 6 plus x cubed over 4. And I only get at least common denominator of 12, so this is 2 twelfths. This is 3 twelfths. So I'm getting a twelfth here. So we have x plus x squared my oh, plus one twelfth. Now I'm not going to say that coming up with the general term is going to be a whole lot. E there's going to be a lot of easiness out of this problem, and it's not like the last one where I could have just said, "Oh, I'm just going to bump up my exponent by one." But if I'm just asked for the first three non-zero terms, I can get them by thinking about foiling. It's not easy, but I can make it work if I needed to.